Blessings, blessings, blessings. Welcome to Thy Kingdom Come World Ministries. I'm just releasing a quick word today about hearing from the Lord. I've had a couple people ask me this week, um, how do you hear God's voice? Or, you know, and how do I personally hear from God's voice? You know, God is, um, it's a personal relationship. And God speaks to us um, um, personally. So he, he doesn't always, um, God can speak any way God wants to speak at any time he wants to speak, how he wants to speak. And, um, but his word always stands. It always was, it always is, and it will always be. His word doesn't change. Okay. But he will speak how he wants to speak when he wants to speak. Okay, so he will speak differently today than, than he may have spoke another day. But his message is always concrete. Okay, and because we're going through this life, something that he spoke through the prophets of the Bible may not be for me in this day. You understand? Because we're living life. It has to be a relevant word, a now rhema word for today. Okay? I don't need to know what Moses did on the mountain on June the 23rd, da, 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 da. I need to know what I need to, to do right now in this moment, today. July 2nd, 2020, I need to know now, Lord. So I need to hear from you now, Lord, okay? So I'm, I, I just have written down some notes. It's just going to be a few minutes. I'm going to release it to you, and um, you can go on your merry holiday weekend way. <laughs> Hallelujah. Okay, so I'm just going to read it. I'm, I'm going to release it as a... As you know, I have my notes here, but we're going to let Holy Spirit move here. But this is what I have. So you got God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit. Okay? God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit. And for those of you who are taking notes, if you write that down, God, Jesus, Holy Spirit. Now write down next to God, write down oil. Next to Jesus, write down um um, milk and next to Holy Spirit, write down honey. Okay. Now over to the side, write down bread and underneath that or next to it, write down water. Okay. So you got oil, you got milk, you got honey, you got bread, you got water. All of those things are references to God, Jesus, Holy Spirit, right? The anointing, the oil is the anointing. The milk, the word, milk and meat, the word of God. The honey, the sweet presence of God. There's probably more revelations, but this is what I'm giving you right now. The bread, the bread of life. The, the water, the holy water. Where when you consume it, you will never thirst again. The bread, you'll never hunger again. These are all references to God. But if you notice, they're all consumable. The word of God says to meditate on, on his word. I can read this book and I can know it from the front to the back. I can know what it says, but it is a dead letter if it's not consumed. If it's not um, it's a dead letter if it's not consumed, if I have not meditated on it, okay? It's head knowledge. 
head knowledge, just knowledge in and of itself puffs a person up. You lean on your own understanding. If you don't have the revelation of the Holy Spirit, what you meditated on, what you consumed, It has to bring life. It has to bring sustenance. He says, meditate on my word. Consume it. That's why all these, these, these references to God are things that we consumed. The wine. The grapes. The milk, the honey, the bread, the water, the oil. It's because it's consumed. Okay? When in the natural, when we consume things, and I'm sorry this is a little bit, but when you consume things in your body, when you consume food, it comes out of the body. When you consume the things of the spirit, it comes out of the body. It comes out of your being. Do you see what I'm saying? So you consume the things of God. It becomes part of you. You meditate on him. You go to God with your faith. You don't wait for God to come to you. You go to God. You move. That's what faith is. Faith is the substance of things hoped for and things not yet seen. Faith moves, trusting God, it, it moves. And when you move, you take one step and God takes the rest. The devil knows the Bible. The Pharisees, the religious leaders, the priests, the teachers, they all knew the Bible. They knew it very well, okay, but they had no revelation of the living God. How do I, how do I know that? Well, <laughs> number one, look what the devil did in the garden. No revelation. Uh, the Pharisees, Jesus was standing right in front of them and literally said with his mouth moving, I am he, the Messiah. I am he. Blasphemy. They didn't know what was standing right in front of them. Hear what I'm saying. Consume him. Meditate on him. Know him. You lack, you perish for a lack of knowledge because you don't know him. You have not consumed him. If you knew him, you wouldn't say, you <laughs> blasphemer. You would have known that, that you would know, you know who your God is. You know what's in front of you. You can hear him. You can see him. You know him. Because you meditated on his word. As you meditate on this, the written word, the inspired word of God, as you meditate on it, 
and not just read it like a story. The spirit of the living God speaks to you. I could have read 1 Samuel 20 years ago and I read a story and it was a nice story. But today I read 1 Samuel and the spirit of the living God has something to say to me right now in this day. And he uses that word that I've read many times. But today he spoke. Today it had the revelation. Today it carried the power that I needed. Today it was the oil that was poured out today. You can have the oil on the shelf. It's always there. It's always readily available. But when the oil is poured out, it's relevant. The anointing is now. The word is now. Hallelujah. Forgive my, I forgot to shut off the volume on my phone. So my phone, I got to keep going. I, I don't have a lot of time here. So, um, hallelujah. So, um, it, it must be taught um, through, number one, Jesus is the teacher. Number one teacher. Okay? But he puts an anointing on people to teach his word. I wish I had more time. I got to stay on point. So we're talking about hearing from the Lord. Okay. So um, the Bible is like software. It's, it gets downloaded into us. The word of God gets downloaded into us. It must be consumed. It must be meditated. That's the download. The revelation is the download. Okay, so, um, be like a tree that's planted by the water. Draw from the living water. It's a mighty mighty tree that bears much fruit because it's drawing from the living water. Again, consumed, meditated, consumed, right? It's a mighty tree bearing much fruit, okay? Everything is found in the Bible. All your answers are there. It's found in Holy Spirit. The direction you need in this life that you live here, the direction that you need, the instruction that you need, the GPS, he is the navigation, the GPS for us in this world. What are we in this world? We are aliens. If we are aliens in this world, don't we need some help to navigate this world? Yep. We need him to navigate. Knowledge alone will puff you up. Like the religious leaders, they were puffed up in their own understanding. Is knowledge bad? No. It says we, we perish for a lack of knowledge. But knowledge alone is not enough. We have to have it. The revelation of the word. It, it edifies you. It fortifies you. The knowledge alone is, is not it's, it's not enough. Pride will come in with that. You, you, you'll take the word of God and you'll beat people over the head with it. 
You have to have the understanding of the word. The revelation. You cannot stay in the in the you cannot stay the same. You cannot stay in the flesh when you have the revelation of the word of God when it's when it's consumed the oil, the milk, the honey. When you become one with the word of God, you cannot stay the same. Where it's no longer you who lives, but Christ in you. And when Christ is in you because you've consumed him, he flows out of you. That's what flows out of you. Like a river of living water. Um, you, will, you will know, you will think, act, move, love the same as Christ Jesus. When you, when he is in the father, the father is in him, they are in you. You are one. You are one. And it, it, and his character will flow out of you. The fruits of the spirit will flow out of you. The oil, the anointing, the milk and the meat, the teaching, the river of living water, the, the bread of life. Hallelujah. Um, do not let the word depart from your lips. I already said it. In the natural, what you consume comes out. <laughs> In the spirit, what you consume comes out. Out of the abundance of the heart, a man speaks. What's the abundance in your heart? Is it the word of God? Is it the things of God? It's going to flow out of you. Okay? You cannot be led by God without the word of God. Again, remember, I'm reading, I'm reading my notes that I took as I was sitting with the Lord. So sometimes it, um, it has to come back to me what he was saying to me at that moment. But um, when we meditate on, we cannot be led by God without the word of God. Those who are, who are led by the flesh satisfy the flesh. Those who are led by the spirit satisfy the spirit so if we're consumed with him you know his spirit is here we're led by his spirit okay um i'm going to say some words to give you an idea of the difference of having head knowledge seeing words in a book and having the revelation I'm just going to give you a right now example okay so this is going to sound real random but I'm, I'm this is where I'm going with this you'll see in a moment so I'm going to throw some words out there rock determination aim focus victory Slingshot, giant, forehead. Okay, that's nice, huh? Should we just stop right there? Call it good, call it a day, yay. Was there any revelation in that? Do you need a deeper understanding? Right? You need a deeper understanding. You need to hear from the Lord. You need to hear the revelation. Otherwise, it's a dead letter. I said a bunch of words. Big deal. They don't mean nothing, do they? Right. 
are very little. Okay? All right. Let's put some revelation to those words. Uh, rock. Hmm, where to start? My notes are a little bit messy right here. So, um, what did I say? Okay, the rock. The rock had to be picked up. The rock. Okay, the rock had to be picked up. It had to be put into a slingshot. Okay, the slingshot had to be pulled back. The rock had to be catapulted forward. The rock had to hit the target. The rock was the weapon. Is it opening up a little bit more right now? The giant was the enemy. The giant was the problem. Let me open it up a little bit more. David was the rock that God used. David was the rock that God picked up to use it was a small rock david was a smaller man to show the power of the greatness of god a small rock a small man a huge giant a huge enemy a huge problem a small man but the power of God is greater than he who is in the world. Greater is he who is in us than he who is in the world. Okay? All right. Got to keep moving. So, so he picks up David. He picks up the rock and he puts it in the slingshot. He pulls, he pulls it back. When you pull it back, that's the determination to take out the enemy. The determination. Oh, you done made me mad now, giant. I'm going to kill you. Pull it back. The determination. You're going to get it. Because the farther I pull this back, <laughs> the more you going out. Lights out. <laughs> okay? Lights out. Then you have the shot. He had to have faith that he was going to hit that giant in the, where he needed to be hit to die. Otherwise, David was going to be in some <laughs> serious trouble. Yeah. Yeah. The faith was the shot. The giant was the enemy. The giant was the problem. And it had to go in Jesus' name. Because we have the victory. The forehead was the focus. You fo focus on the purpose and the destiny. I need to hit it right here. My focus, I'm staying on focus. I'm staying in my destiny. My destiny is to take out the giants in the land. That's my destiny. I'm a warrior. Hallelujah. <laughs> David's size was the greatness of God. It don't matter who you are. If God wants to use you, Oh yeah, God's going to use you. It don't matter who you are. It don't matter the, it don't matter the size you are. It don't matter your title. God will use a donkey if he wants to. God will use Mary if he wants to. God will use Ruby if he wants to. God will use Leo or Sally if he wants to. God is God. He gets to do whatever he wants. Hallelujah. Okay, so the slingshot itself is the Holy Spirit. 
the weapon that was used to take out the, the word of God is what? The sword of the spirit. Cut, cut. Cut away flesh from spirit. Okay? So, you have, okay. So, um, I'm almost done. I'm almost done. God never forgets us. So, why do we forget him? Why do we put him aside? He never forgets us. Stay in him. Meditate on him. You want to hear God's voice? Why do you only take him off the shelf when you need something from him? And then you're sad because you don't hear from him. Well, how come you hear from him? Well, I don't know. I spend a little more time with him. I don't know. You know, that, that's just one thing. Okay, discernment. You have to have discernment um, when God is speaking. Like I said, God can use anything he wants um, to, to use. He can use a sign. He can use a bird. He can use somebody's voice. He speaks through vessels like I'm speaking to you right now. He, he speaks through the weather. He, he's, he's in everything. Pay attention. He's speaking all the time. Let those who have eyes to see, see. Let those who have ears to hear, hear. Listen and pay attention. I had a woman ask me a question the other day. She didn't even listen to the answer. Do you want the answer or not? I, I watched another woman have a powerful, anointed teacher right in front of her. And she kept talking over him the whole time. I was like, if you have all the answers, honey, why, why are you asking the questions? Then, then, then go because you're wasting his time. If you're not going to listen. All right. Hallelujah. Okay, so um, God, if God's spirit is in you and with you, don't underestimate your thoughts. What am I thinking about? What did I just think? Was that God prompting me to move? Okay, and yes, I get the battlefield is in the mind and the, and the, and the enemy can work there too. But the more you know your God... And the more you listen, you can discern. That's where maturity grows Grows in discernment. Or discernment grows in maturity. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, the mature are skilled in the word of righteousness. Okay. You, you're, you're past the, the milk. Okay. You're past that. You're skilled in the word of righteousness. Okay. Um, one thing... David, King David, always did before battle, always, is he inquired of God the battle plan. Always going to God, never thinking he knew, leaning on his own understanding. Okay, um, last but not least, Moses. God says to Moses, Strike the rock because, the, and, and then the, and, and he did, and the rivers of, you know, the, the water came out, the fresh water came out. They needed water. Okay. And, and the next time God said, speak to the rock, he leaned on his own understanding and he struck the rock again, thinking this is, it, it's, it can only work this way. He, 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 he didn't do what God said. He didn't go. He, so by doing that, by disobeying God, he didn't make it into the promised land. Okay. I hope that helped you understand. I have one more uh, revelation to give you because God just showed me this right now. See, this is the living word of God. Before Jesus. Oh, Lord, help me. 
He had to strike the rock. This was before Jesus came on the scene, right? He had to strike the rock. But now we have the Holy Spirit and we get to speak. We speak to the rock. See, it doesn't have to be that physical thing in front of us. It is it's the Holy Spirit that we get to interact with and hear from, speak to and hear from them. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We love you. It's time for us to go and we bless you in Jesus' mighty, mighty name. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen.